everybody and welcome to today's video. My name is Kaylee Rademacher. I am an INFJ 9 wing 1 and today we are going to be talking about type 2, the sin of pride, and the counteracting virtue, how to stop letting this sin take hold in your life. All right, um, well, I guess that's pretty much it. I have a website if you'd like to visit it and make an appointment, I'd love to talk with you. But other than that, let's get into it. Okay, so for the type two, the core sin is pride, which manifests in all kinds of ways. I think it was very difficult to understand how pride actually works in the two. You know, the type that is called the servant or the host, how can they be prideful? Um, but really what's interesting is it's kind of this doctor, patient, teacher, student position that the two oftentimes puts themselves in, or they might just kind of stumble into this role of this person needs help, they need my help, I help them. Um, when there's a lot of assuming that goes on in that kind of cycle. Um, and it all kind of is related to pride. Not always, but oftentimes it's related to pride of they need my help. Um, you know, there's the, the different ways you show each type that you care about them um, and the different things that each type will say to you when they care about you. For the type two, it is giving advice. Um, you know, you can kind of see the pride in that. Uh, not necessarily, you know, twos are helpful. They are genuinely wanting to be helpful, but this is the sin. This is the weakness is pride. And so it can manifest in ways like I am helping you because you are small and you need my help. I am smarter than you are when it comes to knowing what you need. Um, this can make it difficult for twos in relationships and friendships to feel a lot of jealousy or um, kind of resentment or maybe even envy a little bit of like, I want to be your special friend. Do you see everything I do for you and like I'm not your top pick? Um, twos want to be special to you. Um, the problem is twos through this, through this desire to be special to other people and denying your needs, which is also somewhat prideful to say everyone else has needs, but I don't. Um, it can become difficult in relationships where you're trying to give, but it's hard for you to receive. Um, I think I mentioned it in a video a while ago about twos, they like to give love, but they have a hard time receiving love. Fours like to receive love, but they have a hard time giving love. And sixes want to make sure everything is fair. Um, anyways, the type twos have a hard time receiving love. And when you're someone who is in a relationship, that's difficult because how is the other person supposed to connect with you and give back to you? Okay, anyways. So the counteracting virtue for pride and this pride that kind of seeps in in these, these um, more hidden ways is, you probably have guessed it, humility. But what I want to talk about are two aspects of humility, which is truth and justice. Humility is made up of these two things. So what is important to remember in trying to counteract this sin of pride is looking at what is true, looking at where you really are in relation to another person when you're trying to help someone and maybe they don't want your help and that is offensive and hurtful. Um, it feels like they're rejecting you, not that they're just rejecting your help, but they're rejecting you. Seeing the truth in the situation of, well, this might just be their boundary. Maybe they don't want help. Maybe they don't need help. Maybe this is how they want it to be. 
Um, but looking at the objective truth in the situation, and then justice can be described as giving one what is their due, what someone is owed. And so when you couple these two things together, truth and justice, and you're working against pride, it can look something like, you know, I don't feel appreciated. I helped, I brought my friend cookies, I texted her uh, three times this week asking her how she's doing, make, you know, keeping up with her, making sure she's doing well. And she's just kind of not really reciprocated. I don't feel appreciated. Well, let's look at the truth of the situation. Let's analyze the facts. The facts are you, instead of looking at it of I did a nice thing, positive, I did a bad thing, negative, just I did this thing. I texted this person several times and they texted back an answer. It wasn't as enthusiastic as I felt it should be. I didn't feel as loved through it as I should, as I was hoping to feel. Um, and then I took them cookies and they didn't seem thankful. Did they ask for cookies? It's okay to go out of your way for other people, but the pride and the sin of how this corrupts the two is they might go out of their way in order to receive a response of appreciation or affection and to feel loved. And knowing that not everyone is going to respond the way you want them to. So what? let's find the just action based on the objective reality. You took your friend cookies. They didn't ask for cookies. You've been texting your friend. They did answer, but maybe it wasn't in the way you were hoping for them to. Okay, how should we respond? What do you deserve in this situation and what does your friend deserve in this situation? To be, to jump the gun and maybe be offended and upset and hurt um, where you're making decisions based on that because those feelings are going to be there. So let's acknowledge the feelings and then say, okay, what should I do? Let me try to see reality and seeing reality might help kind of soften some of these emotions or change some of these emotions. But if that does not work, what should we do in a response? Because our personality is what gets the best of us sometimes <laughs> and acting on our personality and our impulses and our inclinations can really get us into trouble sometimes. And so if, okay, my friend didn't respond the way I wanted, I did this nice thing for them and they didn't respond the way I thought that they were going to. So let's see, they didn't ask for this. They, maybe they've been really busy and I've kind of been intruding or bugging them or something like that instead of being the generous kind friend that I thought I was being I could see how in their situation they see that you know this is just another task another thing to respond to and then what if they're on a diet like you don't know everyone's extenuating circumstances so what is just what is the right thing to do and what is the right thing for them to have done to you because where pride can be very damaging is seeing how other people didn't treat you the way you thought you should have been treated but if you can acknowledge all of these other parts like nobody asked for my help well you know they'd start complaining if i stopped helping well maybe they would just because you're you know, they're used to you doing this. And if you stop doing it, maybe they'd be worried about you. But it, that doesn't mean that you need to do this thing or you're, that you have to do this thing or that it's healthy for you to do this thing. So going out of your way in order to receive affection, but then that struggle of it's hard to be loved, but you want to show love, it it becomes a very lonely and difficult place as a two. So looking at the truth and the justice through this desire of humility of what is the objective reality in this situation, not 
how do I, how, what are my expectations and were they met, but what is proper? You know, should I be thanked for making everyone in my family dinner? Yeah, they should say thank you. They didn't have to make it. If I don't feel like they're thankful, that that's a feeling that I'm having. They said thank you. If they didn't show me more, there's always this level of communication you could add in of explaining, you know, in these different situations. But when reality and when the truth of the situation is clear and people are responding to you in a very just proper way, you are getting what you deserve. People are thanking you and they are appreciating you when you deserve it. Then not having that feeling of being that special friend or being valued is the struggle that a two has. And so being able to see, oh, this is a struggle that I have as a two, not this is my husband not caring about me enough, or this is my friend being a bad friend to me, but seeing possibly this is me being a two and it's showing up in this way for me. I hope that wasn't too rambled or confused and that this all kind of made some sense and that it was helpful and a little bit more of a doable deep dive into humility for the counteracting virtue to pride for the two. All right, I hope to see you guys again soon. I'll be back soon with type three and vanity, and some people would say deceit as the sin for the three. All right, 